welcome back to Aries Witchcraft. So today I wanted to talk about a entity I've been working with recently. Um, I had another unexpected encounter by this one, um, but delightful nonetheless. I established communication with Astral. Um, she appeared to me as a female, so I know that these entities can appear um, to each their own, you know, they will appear differently to one and then completely opposite to the other. But for me, she was female. Astral, from my research, has been given the name Astral by religious organizations to demonize her. I believe she is Ishtar or Inanna, a very ancient deity in Sumerian beliefs, but Ishtar is from Babylonian beliefs. The mother of love, sexuality, war, fertility, and like Aphrodite in the Greek pantheon, um, she is associated with Venus or even born of Venus um, in some uh, research that I found, but that's, you know, rocky. Uh, I have a feeling though, after opening up myself to her, that she is so much more than what the internet puts out and completely worth working with. Um, I found that she can help with Kundalini and Tantric energy and help a sorcerer to be better during divination or visions or psychic abilities even. Uh, if you would like the enchant I use for her, um, it is Tasa, Alora, Corrine, Astaroth. Or um, you can replace Astaroth with Ishtar or Inanna if you wish. Use this to establish feeling out her energy. And uh, I established communication with her first um, through after meditating through ritual using my black mirror, incense, and offering. Um, I used red wine because um, to me it just screams, you know, sensual. <laughs> um, and uh, my own sexual energy. In my opinion, using sexuality and both feminine and masculine energy, but you know, especially feminine, uh, it is very helpful in the evocation process. She can help with insight of your heart as well. Animal symbols are usually the lion or the dove. And Ishtar was known as the, uh, the Babylonian goddess, like I said, and I see relations to the dark goddess known as Babylon as well, um, to Ishtar. For fertility issues, I think she should be consulted, invoked for battle. She can also represent war. So if you're battling really anything, because um, there are multiple reasons why Ishtar can be beneficial, but for any type of battle, um, I would recommend her. Um, also take into consideration wisdom and guidance as given from her to the serious practitioner, like I mentioned with her insight to divination practices. Also while evoking her, I use the star of Anana or the Sumerian depiction of Ishtar but this seems to have helped my results along with um, carving or drawing the number 15 known to be the sacred number of Ishtar. Plant I would use for her. Um, in my research I found wheat. Um, I didn't really use any plant but I figured I'd throw that in there for others because some people like to use herbs and stuff during ritual. Um, I would do her evocation at night. Um, she is associated with the moon as well. Also known as the great harlot or lady of all harlots or the whore of Babylon. I very much uh, love those terms because we can take a vulgar or a derogatory term and change it to embrace it symbolically, uh, if that makes sense. It does to me, I kind of like it, you know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, while evoking her, I use these terms during ritual, uh, symbolically. 
She is also interestingly known as the Queen of Heaven. Since working with her, my dreams personally have been providing me with oracle or vision, um, uh, visions coming to me and uh, messages and they've been very vivid. Uh, sex has become very liberating, almost a bit more intense and welcoming um, than when I was working with Lilith, although she is very intense as well. Uh, she can be evoked for many purposes, but the reason I am working with her um, is for what she's provided me with the dreams, divination, sex, astral traveling. Um, she's known to help you walk through different realms or different worlds. Uh, defeating enemies, healing and protection from oppression. The great rite practiced in some traditions and covens was done in ancient times in her honor. Uh, for those unfamiliar with the great rite, it is now used as an initiation. Um, I can't remember if it's like Wicca, but in some initiations and covens, um, and they have two ways of doing it now. Um, but it is a sex magic ritual or rite. Uh, trusting her with your fate and evoking her regarding guidance and questions about your fate or it, it is a unique experience with her. She can give you insight when you're kind of lost or guidance when you really don't know what the hell to do. Um, when you're just puzzled as to where the fuck your life's going and what's going on, uh, she is really good at providing answers to help you with that. I'm looking forward to sharing more of my practice with her, with you guys. Um, but for now, I leave you with this information, hopefully inspire you to work with her. Um, she is a fierce and powerful energy. I absolutely cannot wait to see where this path working goes and what else I uncover while working with her. Um, and there are multiple ways that this energy can benefit a practitioner. Uh, so I hope you find some of this information helpful and useful. And I'm going to be talking about Ishtar or Inanna or Astaroth, Astarte. <laughs> multiple faces there are multiple names multiple energies that could possibly be the same one that i personally believe is the same energy so we'll be talking about her for a bit in my path working with her along with some more left hand path information and uh yeah until next time much love and i hope you enjoyed this